Hello, so you want to know how to overcomplicate a scrunchie. Let's get into it, shall we? First, who, what, and why am I even doing this for? Well, this scrunchie was made in collaboration with the self-proclaimed Pokemon professor, YouTuber, and my personal friend, Professor Rosemary. He commissioned me to design and create this based on the floral headpiece seen on Lilligant the Pokemon, but more specifically, her Pokemon Cafe mixed equivalent Lilligant floral tea. You see, the floral piece drawn onto the pot handle here is a more simplified illustration of Lilligan's floral headpiece, which is her defining feature, and the professor had a simple idea of replicating this two-dimensional image and bring it into our three-dimensional universe. Now, the professor did have one request, and that was to use a ready-made elastic band instead of a loose elastic cord or band. Now, that would pose as the only challenge at first. The first thing to do before we would design Research, observation, and analysis. When we take a closer look at Lilligan's floral headpiece, we can clearly deduce the following. There are three distinct colors that make up the flower and crown, orange, yellow, and white. There are six petals, crown points, and crown jewels. And lastly, there are two white dots and a single line on each petal. Clearly interpreted from nature, Lilligant, I suspect, is inspired by the tiger lily, and her center crown was a very clever interpretation of the flower's stamen, which is the flower's male reproductive organ, the filament, and anther. The last thing to do before we get started, procrastinate and paint the very thing we're going to be making as a kind gesture and gift to our collaborator and client, cause why not? It would also serve as a nice background piece when we have tea. I made my way to the shop to buy the bare minimum of fabric that I needed. I didn't possess any bright orange or yellow fabric, so that was my only expenditure. I used white felt for the detailing, bought a quarter of a meter of plain weak yellow cotton, and half a meter of the same fabric in orange. Both had a width of 112 centimeters. I procured matching colored thread in yellow, orange, and white, and an assortment of mismatched orange threads that I had for overlocking. It was a combination gathered from my personal stock as well as generously gifted from the professor. From that bare minimum of fabric, I managed to create three scrunchies based on my pattern, and if you didn't want to use felt, another option would be to embroider, use fabric paint or a marker, or pom-poms for a 3D look instead. Since the image of the white details were flat, I stuck to that aspect. On to creating the pattern. There are a few things that I had to determine. First, I'd be working based on the cross grain length of my fabric and my pattern would be unfold when cut. So I could divide the total measurement and pattern in half. That also meant dividing up the total number of petals to fit within that half pattern. Instead of drawing out the complete six, it's two and two halves. Okay, let me explain. On the fold line sits a half petal because once it's cut and the fabric is opened, you get one full petal. Two full petals are drawn in between the total length since they will be doubled when cut. And lastly, on the selvage, there's another half petal because it'll be sewn and connected to the other end of the fabric strip to make one petal. Another thing to determine was the height and width of each petal and the spacing between each of them. Admittedly, my first two samples of this crunchy were shockingly big now that I look back on it. It looked more like a mini plushie rather than an oversized scrunchie, as that was my initial sizing aim. And after talking it out with the professor, I tested out a shorter height which worked out much, much better. As for the width and spacing, the petals didn't need to overlap or touch in the pattern since the elastic would gather them together anyway. Frankly, the width was something arbitrary that would be easy to mark with my ruler and that would leave a small gap in between each petal. And at the base of the petals is a rectangle that separates and connects the orange strip to the yellow. Lastly, there's an inverse curve between each petal. This is done because it's easier to sew smoothly according to the curve and since it doesn't abruptly come to a point, it makes pressing the petals more seamless and smooth without having to snip at sudden corners. If I had to explain to someone how to create this pattern yourself from scratch, here's how you do it. Start out with a rectangle that's half the width of your desired fabric length. If you're following the six petal rule, take that half measurement and divide by three, you'll get two points to mark, and that would be the center of your two petals. Then extend on either side of each petal center guideline to determine the total width of the petal. Take that half width measurement and draw the guide for the half petals on either end of the rectangle. Next is to mark the total height of the petals and draw the horizontal line to separate the two colors. 
then draw out the symmetrical curves or C-shape of each petal and the inverse curves in the spacing between. To do so, use a compass or practically anything circular you have at home. And lastly, for the white details, I notched the markings for the dots and lines based on the center guideline down each petal and marked the dots at the same distance from the center outwards. I've input my seam allowances into the pattern. Since it's so small, it's a lot easier to just input it now instead of having to draw it out after, especially on all those curves. I allotted 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 for seam allowances. The only seam allowance needed is on the edge of the half petal that's not on fold. I made my measurement just perfect from selvage to selvage, which I would only later discover was a mistake. But sticking to the 0 0.5 seam allowance, it wasn't drastically obvious that that last petal was any smaller. And that's all okay with me. When it comes to cutting out the pattern pieces, there are two strips per color. The yellow strip that's the center of the scrunchie, the two strips that make the petals, 12 small dots, and 6 rounded rectangles. Once we have all our pieces cut out, it's time to assemble and stitch them together. The first thing I did was to set up my overlocking or edging machine to connect my colored strips together. It's not necessary to overlock since the seams will be hidden away. My reasoning was to use up what's left of these remaining thread spools and to prevent raw edges from fraying since I'll be working with them for some time before it'll be sewn up and it'll also serve as a guide when folding in that inner edge to top stitch the seam close. This will come into play soon. After the strips are connected, I'll sew most of the white details, all except that final center line, which will be stitched after I've connected the two edges. Then it's to the ironing board where I'll press down my seams and fold in that edging that'll be my guide when closing up the scrunchie. Next step is sewing up the petals. With the petal curve sewn, it was off to the iron board once again to turn out my petals and press them flat. Back to the sewing machine, I'm stitching up that connecting seam like so, aligning and matching up every seam. And I'll snip a bit off the seam allowances connecting the curves of the petals, otherwise it'll be too bulky and won't lay flat. 
All right, the final stitch. Like I mentioned in the beginning, my friend, the professor, had me use an elastic band. He generously sacrificed one of his. With the long strip now sewn up into a large circle, I sandwiched the elastic band in between the two yellow strips and top stitched little at a time, adjusting my fabric and stretching the elastic as needed. Here's where ironing down that inner edge really helps since it creates a perfect guide that will line up evenly as I stitch around. On the plus side, I don't have to worry about loose strands or fraying coming from the raw edges had I not overlocked it. Just like that, we have a Lilligan scrunchie. Guess here is where I get to say this is intended to be more of a decorative scrunchie rather than to be twisted on itself, especially if you wanted to see the details on full display. And since there was enough fabric to yield two more scrunchies, I quickly and happily did so, excluding those awful white details. They were honestly cumbersome, tedious, and time-consuming to cut and sew since they were so small and had such tiny curves. But I also felt, huh, pun intended, that it made it look overall childish and cheap it could just be the stark white felt against the bright orange, but I'm not going to spend my time overthinking it. only on the third scrunchie that I decided not to snip off the connecting pedal strips. Since I cut the piece with the curves on the fold, that made it a lot easier to work it as one complete piece as opposed to two separate halves. The professor only gave me one elastic, so I made the second and third using a leftover elastic band that I had. They were cut at a length of 16 centimeters to match the circumference of the elastic band. What I thought to do was to sew up the overlocked seams connecting the orange and yellow strips since it would create a solo channel for the elastic to cord through without shifting it upwards into the pedal. However, what I had to learn the hard way was that it was necessary to keep the whole thing open as the elastic would gather everything together cohesively. Being in the yellow channel alone created greater bunching only in the channel and that left the pedals looking limp and lifeless. And here's the whole family of Lilligan flower blossoms, all of which are now with the good professor. If you'd like to watch his video on making Lilligan floral tea that includes a much shorter and simplified version of my overly drawn out methodology, I'll have his video linked in the icon above, the description below, and in a pinned comment. If you decide on making this yourself and choose to share it, I do hope you'll tag me, I'd love to see it. With that folks, till next time.